So any other hackers in the room? Hey, all right, we got a good start. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm Pablos, computer hacker, um, salsa dancer at night. <laughs> and I work in a lab called Intellectual Ventures where we try to invent for the world's biggest problems. And I'm not going to have a lot of time to talk about that today, but what we do is we hire one of every kind of scientist. We buy one of every tool in the world. That's our machine shop. And we try to invent crazy ideas that nobody else would come up with for solving problems. Um, that's what I think uh, all of you should do with your life. But um, let's talk about hacking. I'm standing in a hotel room kind of like this. Um, pretty boring place, except that, you know, there's a TV, but that TV is not like the TV in your house. That TV is a node on a network, kind of like a computer on the internet. And if I plug in a little uh, infrared USB transceiver to my computer, I can send codes to the TV that it's not expecting, all right? So what? Uh, well, it means I can watch movies for free. No big deal, really, but you know, sometimes you can play games. That might be more interesting. But I can not only do this for my TV in my hotel room, I can do it for your TV in your hotel room. So I get to control what you're watching tonight, and I can watch what you do. So if there's these checkout systems where you put in your credit card number, I can watch you do that. Um, if there's a keyboard like this hooked up for surfing the web, I can watch you surf the web. You never know what people might do on the hotel TV. These are like bank websites. I like this one, funds transfer. Really big funds transfer. You'd think these things should be private. Turns out like you can just watch all the other TVs in the hotel. Um, things hackers can do. I worked on a bunch of projects related to hacking wireless technologies. This is probably the most notorious. It's a robot we built called the HackerBot. So the HackerBot, we built because we went to see first competition and we saw that high school kids could build robots. And I figured, well, if they could do it, I could do it because <laughs> I got a machine shop and stuff. So, um, <laughs> so we built this robot and eventually we figured out, oh, it should probably have some purpose. So we made it into a hacker robot and it can drive around and find Wi-Fi users and show them their passwords on the screen, which, you know, I thought the world needed. We eventually <laughs> built a, uh, the pistol version of the same thing, and uh, long range password sniffing sniper Yagi. The interesting thing about these things is I could do the same thing roughly with a laptop, but nobody's interested in putting a computer nerd with a black t shirt and a laptop on television. But a nefarious hacker robot, well, that makes for good TV time. And so by contextualizing these security problems in a way that was more mediagenic, we got a lot more interest in them. Um, and that's part of what hackers do, is try and show what problems exist so that you don't have a false sense of security about how things work, right? Um, there's a project I worked on with Ben Laurie, another hacker, to try and show passive surveillance. So I put a computer in each room of a conference um, logging Bluetooth traffic from phones and laptops, and so I could print out a map like this for each person at the conference. This is the map for Kim Cameron. He was the chief privacy architect at Microsoft. So, unbeknownst to him, I know that he went to this session for 15 minutes, got bored, went downstairs, came back up. I can correlate this with other people at the conference and figure out who he hangs out with. I can do this with GSM and phones or RFIDs and passports and credit cards. This is a buddy of ours, Sammy, computer hacker, who was trying to figure out how to meet chicks on MySpace. Any MySpace users here? Well, it was kind of like Facebook for your grandparents, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so what happened is, like Facebook, you're not very cool if you don't have any friends. So Sammy figured out he could write a little bit of code to put on his page so that whenever anybody looked at his page, it would just automatically add them as Sammy's friend, skipping the whole, is Sammy really your friend protocol. And then it would copy that code to your page so that whenever anybody looked at your page, it would automatically add them as Sammy's friend too. And it would also change your page to say that Sammy is my hero. <laughs> In under 24 hours, Sammy had over a million friends on MySpace. I think this is totally brilliant. Not everyone agrees. Sammy served three years probation for this stunt. <laughs> I think MySpace should have tried to hire him, but 
Christopher Abad, another awesome computer hacker, was trying to meet chicks on MySpace, but it wasn't going very well. He met a lot of crazy girls. So um, what he figured out is that he could feed profiles from MySpace into a spam filter as a legitimate email if they were girls he had dated and liked. Profiles of girls he dated and did not like, he'd feed them in as spam. A spam filter uses artificial intelligence to try and figure out the difference. So then he runs it against every profile on MySpace and outspits girls you might like to date. Right? That's not what a spam filter was designed for, but ABAD has figured out how to repurpose it for what he needs to get done. Right? And this is the point about these guys. This is the point about hackers in general, is that they interact with the world in a different way. They have a different mindset about stuff. If you get a new gadget, you might show it off to your mom and say, look, mom, check this out. And she would say, she would ask you, well, what is it? What does this do? Mom, it's a phone. OK, I got it. It's a phone. <laughs> but if you hand something to a hacker, the question's going to be different. The question is, what can I make this do? All right? I'm going to flip it over, take all the screws out, crack it open, and break it into a lot of little pieces. And then I'm going to figure out, what can I build from the rubble? All right? And that's discovery. That is the process that's necessary to figure out what's possible. That's the scientific process with technology. That's the scientific process. It's discovery. Figure out what's possible. And that's where all your new inventions come from. Right? Once we know what's possible, then we can say, oh, well, maybe if I tweak that, I could actually make it useful. <laughs> Sometimes you can't figure that out. Sometimes hackers are no good at figuring that out, but they're good at figuring out what's possible. And so the mindset of a hacker is really, really useful. And you guys should all cherish that in some way. Um, anybody use keys like this Bloop. to open your car? No? All right. So uh, I'm sure you guys know on weekends you can take your key and go cruising through a Walmart parking lot and click open, 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 bloop. Eventually you'll find some other car that looks kind of like yours, maybe a different color, but it has the same key code because the car company didn't know that random numbers are free and they didn't use enough of them, and so they reused the same codes. We figured this out when um, my buddy Eric, who works on a lot of these hacking projects with me, we were at the, or he was at the airport trying to lock his car, and he, bloop, tried to lock it. A second later, it pops up again. Bloop, locks it, pops up again. And he looks down the way, and somebody else with the opposite problem <laughs> in a similar car to his, <laughs> yeah. For one manufacturer, we figured out how to manipulate the key so that it opens every car from that manufacturer. All right? Where's system update in your car? Anybody ever uh, use a lock like this on your front door? Anybody here try to pick locks? All right, I like that. Go learn to pick locks. <laughs> These tools are a big pain in the ass, though, so that's the old way of picking locks. You've got to have OCD and lots of time and finesse to make it work. So I'm going to show you the easy way. This lock is a Schlage lock. It's on half of the front doors in America, probably on yours. This is a key that's a Schlage key, but it's not cut properly. It won't fit uh, in a way that opens the key, opens the door. So I put it in there. I'm going to smack it. Oh, I just picked a lock by accident. That was really easy. All I did is I filed the teeth down on this key to the lowest settings. And this technique is called bump key. It's really, really easy. There's videos on YouTube of 11-year-old girls showing you how to do it. <laughs> I th go try it out. I wanted to make bump keys for you. I didn't have time. Anybody use these uh, USB thumb drives? Print my Word document? OK, good. Well, mine is kind of like yours, except that while you're printing my Word document, Magically and invisibly in the background, it's making a little copy of your My Documents folder and your browser cookies and database of passwords and all that stuff. In a hidden folder here, just in case you ever need it, you can come get it from me. <laughs> Anybody here ever try to use credit cards? We know they're wildly secure, right? <laughs> Waitress can take a little pencil rubbing of your credit card and go shopping. Well. Um, a couple years ago, we got a new credit card in the mail that said it was a new secure credit card, um, which we thought was really exciting. Whenever hackers get something in the mail that says it's secure, uh, <laughs> we just feel compelled to look into it. So 
Um, the reason this is supposed to be secure is it has an RFID chip in it. And uh, it's wireless. And so you've seen in taxis in Chicago, you can just wave the card over the reader and magically you've paid. Well, we thought that there would be a bunch of crypto and we knew a little bit about cracking crypto and we bought a bunch of RFID gear off the internet. One of the things I bought was this reader on eBay for $8. It's just like the one in the taxi cab. Um, and then we had to make this cable, which is kind of ugly, to hook it up to our computer. And then what we did is uh, started poking at it. So anybody have one of these new credit cards? I know you're all kids, but surely somebody's got their mom's credit card that could bring up on stage so we could try this out, right? <laughs> all right. It's not as cool if I steal my own credit card. Get on up here. <laughs> All right. You got your new credit card. Put it in your back pocket. Yeah. It's a much cooler demo. All right. Now, come over here and pretend you didn't see the computer hacker was getting near your ass with his reader. OK. No now listen. Uh oh. Is it this pocket? Yep. Let me see your card. It didn't work. OK, we're going to try my card. <laughs> beep. Did you hear the beep? Let me see. This is the wrong kind. It's the wrong kind. It doesn't do wireless, does it? I don't know. It doesn't. No, that kind doesn't work. All right, thanks, though. All right. We stole my credit card. She's still secure. <laughs> thanks for sharing. OK. Um, my mom calls me Paul. This is my old American Express card. You can see that uh, if it beeps, you can know that a hacker is coming after your credit card, right? So watch out for that. Um, so it's not secure at all. It turns out there is no crypto. The credit card companies don't really care about security. Uh, they just think it's funny to send out new, <laughs> new products that they claim are secure, I guess. Oops. So, OK. Um, I had a point I was going to make in this whole presentation, which I forgot what it was. And, um, okay, I'm going to make one point. So, I'm gonna, I know I'm out of time, but I have two extra minutes from yesterday. So, this, uh, <laughs> this is a protocol diagram for SSL. That's the encryption system in your browser that keeps credit cards secure when you send them to victoriasecret.com. Really boring. But the point is, hackers will attack every point in this protocol. What happens if I send a date from the future? What happens if I send two responses instead of one? What happens if I send a zero instead of a one? What happens if I take too long sending a response? All of these are things that might cause some software somewhere to break. And if it breaks, then I might get it to do something else it wasn't supposed to do, like give me your credit card numbers, right? This is kind of what that all looks like to hackers, a bunch of cryptic code, but you can actually learn to read this stuff, as I have. Hexadecimal is fun for you and me, okay. Um, this is a mosquito in Africa that kills about a million people a year, half of whom are kids, under five, by spreading malaria. It's engorged with blood that is sucked out of a human. This is a protocol diagram for malaria. It has a complex life cycle. It spends some time in humans, some time in mosquitoes. And what we do in the lab is I hire hackers and we attack every point in this protocol. Right? We are going to figure out how to eradicate malaria from the face of the earth once and for all in our lifetime, in your lifetime. We can do that. We can do that. Well, by we, I mean all of us, not just me. Right? And I need your help. And that's the whole reason that we keep telling you shit like stay in school and learn a bunch of stuff is so that you become a useful human that can help with some of these big problems. OK. Um, all right, I'm going to get off stage. I'm going to show you one more thing. We used to kill malaria with spraying chemicals and other stuff. Now I do it by shooting lasers at them. <laughs> in our lab, we built a machine that finds mosquitoes flying around in the sky. I'm going to skip over the details. Um, and it shoots them down with laser beams. These are details. We'll skip that. Let's show you what this looks like. This is what a mosquito uh, flying around looks like when we target it. So this is video of us targeting mosquitoes. We put those crosshairs around mosquitoes that move. We aim a laser at them. We sample their wing beat frequency so we can figure out, is this a Anopheles stephensi? Is it female? The females are the only ones that 
bite you and carry malaria, right? So to save power, we only shoot the females. Here's what it looks like when we shoot mosquitoes. So that guy just got lit up with a U ultraviolet laser, and he's not coming back. <laughs> this one, we just vaporized his wing off, or her wing off, I should say. <laughs> this is really satisfying, I know. Not even. <laughs> This is before we tune the laser and we just vaporize the entire bug. It's deeply satisfying because, you know, not even PETA comes to save the mosquitoes. Like, uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun with this. Anyway, I'm going to get off stage. I'm out of time. Next year, maybe I'll come tell you about some other crazy projects. I'm at the Intellectual Ventures Lab, and you can read about some of our cool projects there. And you can email me, pablos at composite.com. Thanks. <laughs>